Yeah, a couple of years ago, like two or three years ago by now, I was on ICE train here in Germany, and the guy sitting next to me, I mean, I don't really pry <laughs> if somebody's sitting next to me working on a laptop, I try to not look there. <laughs> but he was working on a PHP application, he was writing PHP unit tests, and he was cursing at PHP units and... So did you help him? <laughs> well, did, see, this or did you let him suffer? <laughs> I let him suffer, but not because I was wanted to be mean, but because um, I had to get up and exit the train. <laughs> just rolling into a station, just when I realized what, what he was working on. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's the Craigslist. Yeah, misconnections. Misconnections, yeah. Craigslist misconnection. <laughs> <laughs> you were the guy with his laptop cursing at PHP unit. I was the maintainer of PHP unit sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. This is kind of cool. We're in our shared office in Cologne, and we're talking today. I hope that I will be able to use our conversation for the Acquia podcast on the one hand, but Campbell and I are also preparing a DrupalCon session. And in the last couple of years, Drupal 8 has actually, well, it's finally out. And in the last couple of years, people have gotten really, really excited about it. And we, as the Drupal community, we've, we keep learning more and more. There's more and more stuff to know and more and more stuff to do. And... Essentially, Drupal has a whole other set of communities around it now, or is part of a much larger set of communities. And one thing that we're using is uh, kind of a testing technology. Do you want to tell us, please introduce yourself and, and tell us what you're about? Okay. Sounds easy enough. Hi, I'm Sebastian, and... Gosh, it's 2016 now. So about 15 years ago, I started to work on a tool that is called PHP Unit, which I, at least back then, never believed, and sometimes even today, don't really believe that it has happened, has become um, the de facto standard in the PHP world for doing unit testing, integration testing, and all other kinds of testing. So what's your connection to Drupal nowadays? What's awesome. My connection to Drupal nowadays is that I'm sitting here in Cologne <laughs> together with you guys <laughs> and talking about PHP unit, for instance. No, um, but seriously, I'm really happy that all these different kinds of PHP communities that a little bit over 10 years ago, or maybe even longer ago, not really split apart from the larger PHP community, but basically for a while the Drupals, the Joomla's, the WordPresses, and so on, they were doing their own thing. And you never saw people that used these technologies or used these projects or worked on these projects showed up at general PHP conferences. So there was no cross-pollination of ideas going on, no discussion going on, like, what are you doing? Here is what we are doing, and can we collaborate or whatever? So basically, it, and I can only speak for myself, I had really no idea what was going on with Drupal, with Joomla, with WordPress, with Magento, right. and all these standard solutions that are built on top of PHP. And frankly, until PHP 5.3, at some point, there was no technical way for any of our projects to, to collaborate anymore, you know, 5.3 brought in namespacing, mm -hmm. right? And all of a sudden, the, the door was open a little bit. Mm. How long have you been doing PHP? I've been doing PHP since late 97, early 98. What version was that? That was PHP 3.0 something. Mm. How did you... Dark Ages. <laughs> 
Did you write your code with a hammer and chisel? <laughs> uh, no, I did not write my code with a hammer and a chisel, but I used a plain text editor, which I basically did my coding in until two years ago when I started to use PHP Storm. Uh -huh. There was no compelling reason for me to use any other IDE than, than, than a text editor until I was really exposed in a good way uh, to PHP Storm. It was the same for me. I was a Vim guy until last year. And why did you have to go to an IDE? Why did I have to go to an IDE? Well, you don't have to do anything, but um, it was the first time that something other than just an editor um, gave me benefit navigate, navigating through a code base, searching um, for stuff that I'm currently interested in. Um, context switches between the code that I'm working on and the respective tests and so on. Fair enough. How did you discover PHP? Do you have a first memory? How did I discover PHP? Um, so I have to go a little bit further back than my discovery of PHP to answer that. So I learned programming a really long time ago on an Amiga. And then my, my first programming languages that I used were um, assembly and C and ARAX. That's what you started with? That's what I started with. I, I did a little bit of Amiga Basic, but um, that was not really that nice. You couldn't really exploit uh, the custom chips that the Amiga had, uh, the graphics chips, mm. from, from just Basic. So I needed to go a little bit deeper, uh, closer to the hardware, um, to do um, real-time 2D um, graphics effects and 3D animation and, and that kind of stuff. So I basically grew up programming in the demo scene. Hmm. And at some point, and I've, I don't really remember when it was, like I said earlier, late 97, early 98, I was contacted by uh, a graphics artist um, from the Amiga demo scene with, with whom I collaborated in my Amiga days. And by then he was doing website design. So he was using, he, he had uh, moved on from the Amiga um, to a Mac and had Photoshop and was doing graphics design and, f I mean, it was a really long time ago. Um, the first um, tools, not really, I'm, I'm not sure even if it was Dreamweaver already, but something before Dreamweaver that allowed you to do something in Photoshop and export it as a website. Ah, uh, yes. So basically, that's what he was doing, which worked fine for him because he was a very talented, talented uh, graphics artist, but he had, of course, no idea about programming. But this worked fine until one day one of his customers needed something that required some real programming on the server side. And that's when he remembered me and, and, and rang me up and said, hey, I'm doing things on the internet now. And... From his perspective, doing assembly on the Amiga is exactly the same thing as doing something on the server on the internet. And you can also fix my printer, right? Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he told me, hey, I need this to be done, and can you do it? And I said, I have no idea. So what, what's the programming language for that? And he said, well, the documents that I got from the hosting company, from the customer, they say something about Perl or PHP. I said, okay. I haven't heard of either of those, um, so I'll, I'll have a look. And I looked at Perl first for about an hour or so and didn't really get along with that language. I don't know. Uh, and then I looked at PHP and then I was able to not only learn as much PHP, as much of PHP as was necessary to get the job done, but also to implement what he wanted in an extended weekend, like from, from Friday uh, to Sunday evening, I worked on that project and hmm. got that done. It was a really, really simple, so comparable to a guest book, but not really a guest book, but that's what, that was my first. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you liked it? I liked it, yeah. Well, well I, I just started uh, university and it was nice to get money for the first time for programming. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So 
So and then I didn't do any PHP for about half a year or so, and then I it came across it again, mm -hmm. and then I stuck with it. Then I went onto the mailing list, the German mailing list, and asked a couple of questions, and a couple of weeks later I was answering questions. At some point somebody said, well, you're answering so many questions and the answers are good. Would you like to contribute to the documentation? And that's when I got my CDS account and started working on the documentation. First translating from English to German. Then I found missing pieces in the English documentation and helped out there. And then at some point I found a bug in PHP. Or at least I believe that the documentation was right and PHP was misbehaving. And that's when I realized, okay, PHP is written in C and I know C. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I have ne had never done any C uh, on x86 on, on Linux. Mm -hmm. So I needed to learn some stuff, but was able to do some bug fixes over the years. But basically, like three or four years after starting with PHP, you started PHP Unit then? Yes. I started to work on PHP Unit in, at some point in 2001. Uh huh. And was there any alternative like that? I mean, were there other testing environments or systems that were in so, use? Yes and no. So I did not know that around the same time that I started working on PHP Unit, Marcus Baker started to work on Simple Test. Mm -hmm. And he started to work on simple tests because, just like me, uh, he wanted to have a unit testing framework for PHP, and there was none. Which is not entirely true, because there was um, a project named PHP Unit on SourceForge, which was written for PHP 3, but I was never able to get it to work with PHP 4. Mm -hmm. I tried to contact the author a couple of times, but never got a reply. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I decided, okay, so this is not going to work. Um, I need to start my own. Mm -hmm. And that was basically triggered by a professor of mine at that university who wanted to drag me over to the dark side of Java. <laughs> um, because, well, he knew that I was involved in the PHP project and he was really fascinated by that. But at some point he said, okay, I can see that you like PHP and that is okay, but I can also see that you like all these concepts um, of object-oriented design and clean code and unit testing. And as far as I know, there is no unit testing solution for, for PHP. So challenge accepted. Come to Java because we have JUnit. Aha. Uh -huh. And you said, hmm, something like that. And then I spent about a week um, working on what would later become the first version of PHP Unit. It didn't have a name at the time, but I was able to show the professor something like a week later. Like, this is a prototype. It can be done for PHP. I mean, why couldn't it be done? It was ugly as hell. But couldn't do a lot, but it showed that the core of what unit testing is about uh, was, po uh, was possible. And over the following months, I polished it a bit and open sourced it. And since PHP unit to me was the only logical name for the thing, and PHP unit was already taken as a project name on SourceForge, I needed a place where I could put it. So, I, I don't know if it was okay for me to do that, because this was way back when, this was in 2001, a couple of months after Stick Button had started the pair project. And for some reason, I had write access there. And there was no RFC process or voting, whatever, for getting a new package into pair yet. So I just put it there. So I had PHP unit from the beginning on cvs.php.net. Aha. Hmm. Hmm. So for, for many people that meant, okay, it's hosted on php.net, so this is the official thing to use. Why did you stick with PHP for the last 18 years? Um, 
Well, it, it's, it's, it's a tough question to answer. So an answer that I'm not going to give is some that I uh, heard from a couple of other people that say, that, um, I came for the language, but I stayed for the community. That's a direct ripoff of Drupal. Yeah, yeah. I've got to tell you. <laughs> um, that is true in a sense because I really love the PHP community. I've ha um, become friends with so many people around the world over the last 18 or what, what years now. Um, some of which I only ever get to see at some conference around the world, but, but okay. Um, but I also like the language. I like the very pragmatic approach um, to solving a web problem. Which does not mean that I'm happy with everything that is in PHP. There are some things in PHP that I don't think should be in PHP. There are some things missing that I should that I think should be in there. And some some things have been implemented in a way that I wouldn't have done it, wouldn't have done that way if I were the only one to decide, but I can see uh, that the compromise was, was, was necessary and for the, for the greater good. But all in all, I'm very happy with PHP. A lot of people have actually answered that question to me by saying, as soon as I hit a problem that I can't solve with it, I will learn something else, but so far it's been fine. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's good enough, right? There's a strong argument for using a tool that you're familiar with, that's secure, that's widely adopted. So, and there are many things that I would never do, or that would I would never implement with PHP, but some other people do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, Derek got a, an open source phone, the Open Moco, right? And he didn't like the fact that it used Python and GTK for its user interface. So he used PHP GTK to write his own front end for his mobile phone, which he used for a while. He must have a lot of free time, right? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I just want a phone that works. So for anyone who is listening or watching now who might not know, oh. please explain what is PHP unit, what is a use case, how can I benefit from mm -hmm. it? So PHP unit uh, is a so-called unit testing framework that stands in the tradition of the X unit family of testing frameworks that began a really, really long time ago with S unit for small talk. But back then, no, almost nobody was using it. The concept became popular when Erich Gamma and Kent Beck were on a flight from Zurich to Atlanta for a conference and they were bored on the plane something that I can relate to. So when I fly, I either sleep or hack on, on, on software to get to, to pass the time. So what they did was, was um, just a little bit before they, uh, before that conference, before that trip, uh, the first version of Java had come out. And Erich Gamma had Java on his laptop. And he was missing a testing framework for it. And Kent Beck had written SUnit for Smalltalk and he wanted to learn Java. So they solved three problems in one go. They passed the time, Kent learned Java, and Erich got his testing framework for, for Java. So it's a unit testing framework, or at least that's how PHP unit started. It's used for much more than just unit testing um, these days. What a unit test is about, it tests, um, or it helps you test one unit of code in isolation from all collaborating objects, for instance. So, for instance, you have one method of, of, of a class and you want to test with known um, input that you get the expected output. That's the, that's the smallest kind of test that you can do. And you can do all kinds of other tests in a much larger scope. One of the biggest, well, one of the most important things in, in testing software is finding the smallest scope in which you can test what you want to verify. And the smallest thing that you can test in, the smallest scope that you can test in, is the unit test scope. If you make it larger, then you come to integration tests, where you, for instance, test that one piece of code interacts correctly with another system, be it a web service or a database or what have you, or the largest 
thing that you can test in an automated way would be to test the entire application as a whole, which in a in the case of a web application usually means that you take a real HTTP client, send a real HTTP re request to a real HTTP server, get a real HTTP response back and inspect that. And that you can also do uh, with PHP Unit. So what does PHP Unit bring for Drupal developers? What do they get out of your out of uh, your collaboration with Drupal? Hopefully better code, hopefully less bugs, and hopefully fun. Fun? Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe. And when, when I started working um, on PHP Unit and got interested in testing, um, I really couldn't believe it. But it turns out that there are many, many people out there, many developers, for whom testing is a lot of fun. It brings, so to some, it's this... It has this feeling of being destructive in a constructive way, like <laughs> like trying to find ways to break their code and writing that down in the form of tests. Mm. And then they're really happy when they see, okay, I cannot think about any other way to break this code and everything is fine, everything is green. So I have a good feeling that this code is correct, is robust, and, and there's this nice synergy between when it's easy to test a piece of code, that means that that code is well written, well crafted. So in the future, when your requirements change or you get new requirements, then it will be easy and convenient and not a horrific experience to adapt the code to the new requirements. That's a great point. Uh, so is it... It seemed, for me, it was like a real paradigm shift to start mm -hmm. actually unit testing my code. And I thought I understood um, what it meant to write good object-oriented code mm -hmm. until I started writing And, and what tests. you describe is um, a very common experience when you as a developer start using a tool for testing. Mm -hmm. PHP unit is by no means the only testing tool in the PHP community, just the one that is used the most. Just the best, most muscular, best looking. Smartest. I, I want to say that PHP unit would look a lot different if I would start writing it today. Hmm. I mean, it, it would be really bad if that wasn't the case, because that would mean that I haven't learned anything in the last 15 years. But since so many people use it, I can only change it ever so slowly. Every time I make um, a major change in PHP unit, a lot of people complain. Mm. Uh, so I have to consider that. Um, and contrary to what some people believe, I'm not an angry German that does all those bad changes in PHP unit to hurt them intentionally. <laughs> I really try hard <laughs> to keep that friction to a minimum, but sometimes um, you just have to do it. So, but. Um, it's, it's common that whatever testing tool um, you start using, you will not have fun with it at first if your code is not testable. Mm -hmm. Many people curse at the testing tool and say, oh, this is stupid. Some people go on Twitter and say, ah, the guy who writes this testing tool must be really stupid or whatever. Um, and that's okay, but um, it's not the real issue. Mm -hmm. It's just the code, uh, the testing tool makes it obvious that the code you are trying to test is not as well crafted as it could be. And that's where the paradigm shift that you mentioned comes mm -hmm. into play. So you, you, feel, you feel this pain and that pain hopefully makes you reconsider the way that you have written your code and you start making changes to make the pain go away. So do you have any um, tips, pro tips for people who are trying to learn PHP and in trying to learn how to write good testable code? Should we write tests first or? Writing tests first, uh, writing tests first helps a lot of people. Hmm. Um, but over the years I've met plenty of people that uh, said that they cannot think like that. Hmm. And that's also okay. Um, if I were to give a rule for that, then it would be don't commit code to your version control without tests. Hmm. So that's a very pragmatic way of thinking about it. So by the time you 
share the code with the rest of the team, the tests are there. And the rest of the team doesn't care about whether or not you have written the test first or the code. But having to have the tests by the time you commit means that the code is testable. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do test-driven development, that's, that's awesome. And it saves you time if you can get your head to work like that. And some people just can't do it. Um, so they will write a version of the code first and then try to write the tests after the fact, mm -hmm. which will be painful to some degree. That's what I did. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then they will change the code to, to make the test possible. Mm -hmm. If you find a problem, that's open source works. Um, um, but or, you, or you complain on Twitter. <laughs> I understand that really nasty messages on for Twitter really help. <laughs> <laughs>